I came on, I mean, came out the hole, and I started banging Cormac to get out. I got the attention there. So they coming to me, yo, what's up with you, man? You keep like this corn for the place. So somebody said, maybe you need to go see a psychiatrist. I go see the psychiatrist. He says, why are you writing corn bit all over the place, man? What's wrong with you? I said, you ain't seen shit yet. We <laughs> I'm going to set the world on fire. You ain't seen shit. Kill a killer podcast. Killer Keller official .com. <laughs> You need the television app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Killer Keller Podcast, coming to you live and direct in London. Central London, as central as you need to be. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Uh-huh. Um, if you haven't checked out the Television app, get involved. Free download for all your street culture, sports and needs. Yeah, we've got a special guest, Transatlantic, getting it across over there. Uh, and and, and uh, 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 beyond legacy holder, the creator of graffiti, the man himself, Philadelphia's cornbread inside the place. How are we, sir? Hello, London. Hello, the UK. <laughs> it's good to be here. You are chilling. You, you, yeah. you, are, you are chilling good. Yeah, I, that's all I can do, chill, man. You know, I'm, I'm up in age now. I don't, it's not allowed to play me anymore. Oh, stop I, it! I try to make things happen. And, no, I, I don't. I don't. I, I, I got to stay busy. Like my mind got to stay busy. I, there's no place for idle time. Oh. I mean, I don't, I mean, adulation is is irritation. Yeah. Man, man, yeah. How old are you? If you don't mind me asking, I just, I just turned sixty-seven. Happy birthday! Yeah, I turned sixty-seven in November. It always, it always uh, humbles me so much when, you know, people like yourself are here very much in the scene, active, doing their part, and yet are humble themselves and the originators, the creators of the culture. It, it just, it, it baff blows my mind and baffles me at the same time. Yeah, um, it's it's like a purity, you know, like those those cats I came through the ranks with, like we we relate on a, a, a certain level that we can identify with. And and um we know what we did, we know what we started, we know what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, um sad to say that we didn't get our proper uh, respect, our proper um notoriety, as it has to say. Um but a lot of this took place with born and bred in Philadelphia. Mm. I'm not taking credit from any from anyone else, but um hip hop has a has a um a vision or this a place where I've started at. Um there's a there's a there's a place, there's a time, there's a a, 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 a origin. Yeah. And there's a version, Philadelphia version of hip hop that was yeah. before New York. We're going to get into this, and this is going to be one of the most key podcasts I think I could possibly have. Um, we're going to go in depth and thorough, and because there's a lot of there's a lot of um, there's a there's a lot of cross referencing and things, and like you say, you, there there's a lot of people. Uh, have been left out of the um, tapestry that the predates New York, predates Bronx, predates hip hop. Right. And, right. you know, gangster rap comes from Philadelphia, Schooly D. We when was I, rapping. I got, I mean, I, got, I can bust a rap to you, but I'm not, but I can bust it. <laughs> That's what Philadelphia was doing. We was busting rap. The same thing they were doing in New York took place in Philly. And when that movement migrated, we got to New York. New York put a title on it and called it hip hop. But it's something that we had a, a movement of 150,000 teenagers who involved themselves in a social uprise, you know? And our convention day annually, 
was in Atlanta City before the casinos was built. Can you imagine 150,000 teenagers occupying all the hotels in Atlanta City. That's what we did. We took over. Wow. That was the first. That was the first wave of the hip hop revolution. What date was that? That was in the sixties. Me. That was in the sixties, man. How old you? How old were you at that point, bro? I just came home from reform school. Wow. I came home. I got the name at reform school. I got wow. notoriety at reform school because I started writing my name all over the halls of YGC, Youth Development Center. I was sitting there. I was sitting there for an indefinite term. And wow. I was going, we was going to our child hall to, you know, to eat our breakfast, lunch, and that's where we headed to the cafeteria. And a lot of times when we got to the cafeteria, see you, and it was outside the unit I was on, our bread was kind of hard. It was stale sometimes. Right. And I went to the back of the kitchen and I had to speak to the head chef. And I knocked on the guy's door. He said, open the door, come in there. I'm, I'm a busy person. What do you want? I said, um, I'd like to talk to you about. So you put some cornbread on the meat, Mr. Swanson. Hmm. He said, I'm a busy person. I don't have no time. Who we'll give you permission to come into my kitchen? I said, nobody. He said, man, get the F out of my kitchen. Take a walk, man. I ain't got time for this. He said, take a walk. Take a walk. So I left. And I seen why I was agitating him. So I'm like, I like to get on this news. I came back a couple of days later. I said, Mr. Swanson, let's talk about some cornbread. And he like, kind of, you know, kid was coming at me. Man, you don't get the F out of here. You know, and I started toying with him. Every time I went back to him, he used to rip me up, man, and took me out when anybody was sitting there and threw me on the floor and got real loud and me, Mr. Love, this is my counselor, keep this yeah. corn bread out of my kitchen and put it on the floor. And I started laughing at me, teasing me, corn bread, corn bread. One of the to me, uh, you know, in all the places that, I mean, the gym was infested with gang members, and I don't know anybody who had a cooler name than a gang member. Yeah, and cornbread fit right on in. So I started writing cornbread all over the place in the cafeteria, in the church, in the visiting room, in the administration, in the nurse's office, and I mean all over the place. So I started getting the attention of the administration and they started pushing me like, "Why are you doing? Why are you writing your name all over the place like this, man?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you know, you don't bother the gangs when the gangs do it. Why are you fucking with me? Mm-hmm. He said, oh, you're going to be smart ass. Well, how about we, we make you clean it off? We'll put your ass in the hole. And I got real loud. I got real, well, put me in the fucking hole. I'm not watching all shit. And mm-hmm. the gang members started plumbing. Okay, bread, okay, bread. I went straight to the hole because I, I was fine. I, I mean, I just couldn't do what they tell me to do. So I went to the hole. I came home. I mean, came out the hole. And I started banging cornbread to get out. I got the attention there. So they come to me, yo, what's up with you, man? You keep like this corn bitch for the place. So somebody said, maybe you need to go see a psychiatrist. I go see the psychiatrist. He says, why are you writing corn bit all over the place, man? What's wrong with you? I said, you ain't seen shit yet. We <laughs> I'm going to set the world on fire. You ain't seen shit. And I came home in 1967. I started walking bus routes. Every time my bus stopped, they said my name, cornbread. I rode cornbread. Everywhere, every day. That's what I did. A lot of guys was at the gang war and hurting each other, shooting each other, stabbing each other. Some guys was into sports. Some guys in entertainment. Yeah. This was a new thing. This is new. My I know the attention I got at YDC. I can get the same thing in the screen. We didn't use the word graffiti. You didn't. We didn't use the word hip hop. You know why? Yeah. You know why? Yeah. Why do you think we didn't use the word graffiti and hip hop? They weren't there. There you go. There was none. How would you have defined it back then? If you were to, because like you say, I, I get the entertainment aspect. That totally rings true because you're providing, it's it's an artistic platform. But what would you have described it if it wasn't graffiti or writing? What would you have called it? Well, I don't know if I hadn't have done it. Somebody else would have done it. Um, it's just that I knew what I had to my advantage. I had a way of communicating and um, I knew that the more I wrote, the more they would talk about me and eventually I would reach the media. That was my objective. And I, I, I reached the media, but, but it wasn't by way what I thought it would be. 
<laughs> did you think it would be? By some 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 glorious feat that I had done. But I was going to work one day and I'm picking up the newspapers. I always read the newspapers while I ride the bus. And I was going to work. And on the front page it read Corn British shot to death. Said it was, huh? uh, that's what it said on the front page. Corn is shot to death. Wow. Story, on, story on page three. So I turned to page three, and this is what it read. A fantastic career of Philadelphia best-known graffiti artists came to a bottle and sunny outside a hotel and bar. Here I am on the bus reading about my own death. Mad. I'm like, what? I pull the cord. I get off the bus. <laughs> I call my job. I call out that day. I call the newspapers. You better get your story right. Guys, like, hello? I said, you better saw you better ink an article about cornbread. It yeah. shot the death. Well, cornbread is not dead. I'm cornbread and I'm alive. Wow. Let cornbread rest in peace, man. Cornbread is going. Let him go, man. Let him rest in peace. We don't need no imposters. He hung up on me. I called them back. I said, you better get your story right. I'll tear this town up. Get your story right. Oh, you again. Let cornbread rest in peace. He hung up. And I knew that if I didn't do something in the next seven days, yeah. and take my name out of the death of the guy got killed, that my name would... It would go out of history. It would go out of no, circulation. It would, not, it, 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 would, it, would, it would have never made history. I'm just getting started. <laughs> yeah. I'm just getting started. They're trying never, to get rid of you. They're trying to delete you before you even began. No, no, it's not, such is not the case. Yeah. The guy, the guy got killed. His name was Cornelius. <gasps> oh, I see. And he's standing in the street, somebody blew his brains out. And people walking by, corn, corn is shot, corn is dead. Was somebody somebody killed corn. Wow. The media automatically assumed that the corn short for Cornelius was the corn short for corn bread. And erroneously announced my demise. Foolish. I'm on a bus reading about my own death. That became a prescription for a disaster. Wow. I knew I had to do something amazingly bizarre. To snatch the media attention so they could repeat their story and let them know that I had, that I still exist. Mm. I had pondered countless possibilities, man. I didn't know what to do. And I started writing Cornbread is not dead, but that didn't have no impact on the general public because they just read an article from page Cornbread shot at the top. It was a anybody. big outlet. That was a big outlet that just right. done in, yeah. Right. So I'm, I, I knew I can't let my reputation go to Cornelius' grave. And I knew I had to do something media. I mean, something real bizarre to snatch the media attention so they could repent this story and bring me back to life. And the only thing I could think of, man, the only thing I could think of that the media going to print about yeah. was going to the zoo. Why? Because the zoo is a tourist attraction. Let something happen in the zoo. Everybody uh. could know. That's genius. To, yes. I go to the zoo and I'm walking around thinking, where am I going to start at? <laughs> and I seen all these people sitting around, around in this pit. It was, you know, hey, and the master of the crowd, I go and see what they're looking at. And there's a zookeeper showering down the elephant. You know, so he taking pictures with the people, man, and he grabbed holds the elephant trunk. And he's making contact with the elephant torso. He's pulling on the elephant ears. To me, the first thing that came to me was this elephant must have came from the circus. Oh, and shit. So I said, I'm like, well, if he can touch the elephant like that, so the fucking, uh, I watched the elephant for three days, man. And I knew <laughs> I was going to bomb the whole zoo out, right? <laughs> I was going to bomb the whole zoo out. But I don't need to do the whole zoo. I got up Sunday morning, early in the morning, anticipating, anticipating. Went to the back of the zoo, came over the fence, came down the clothes where he was at, happened to the pit, and I walked up to him. I took the spray paint off and started clacking up. Clack, 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 clack. Oh, Get a ball wrapped. What, did the, what did the elephant do? He turned around and looked at me. He heard the clack and he turned around and looked at me. Oh, shit. And he didn't pay me no attention. I walked up to him. I wrote corn, bread, lips. Oh, I ran man. around to the other side. I wrote corn, bread, lives. That was a piece of cake, man. I was anticipating all this. I didn't know what to expect. I'm like, this one shit, right? 
He's like, chilling out. The hard. I did, right, it wasn't. It was, but no, so I hops out the pit. Yeah. Guess what? The whole zoo is at my disposal. Oh. I have my way. I, I just like, I literally just raped the zoo. I just, I wrote my name and everything. Man. Just hit the whole zoo up. The whole I zoo got hit. So somebody else was in that zoo, man, to see that I was doing. They called the police. Oh, yeah, if I had if I went on that elevator, it came out that zoo and made my exit. I'd been long gone. But I stayed around, man, and left my mark. And by the time I got to the exit, the police were just pulling them up. Wow. <laughs> We threw the guns. I put my hands up in the air. I said, oh, wait, put your hands behind your back. Took me in custody, man. Lock me, lock me up. So I was up all night anticipating going to do two and a while. Well, I think I got locked up in the process. So I'm trying to get me some rest. I'm sleeping down on you know, the juvenile bench. Yeah. We don't hold this up. Every five minutes. Yo, which one of y'all is calling bread? I said, right here. Yo, kid, give me an autograph. Every five, ten minutes, man. That's what? You know, like, the whole block is, yo, what's up, cornbread? What's up, man? Who the fuck is you, man? Is it because I thought you'd gone? I went to the, um, I went to the, I went to the hearing for that, man. And the judge got my autograph, man. I said, this was, this was on some hot shit, man. You that know? is the coldest story I've fucking ever heard. <laughs> so, 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 um. Georgie was a, a Philadelphia a DJ announced on the radio that the Jackson Five was coming to Philly to do a show at the Uptown Theater. Right. And, um, Jackson Five was one of the hottest groups in America, and you can do that, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, since nine eleven, everything has changed. Yeah. But back then, you know, you could come out to the tour man and they invited. There's like a publicity stunt the Jackson Five. Um, so I go down there the day the, the plane arrived, and about maybe seventy people down there. Man. You know, and it comes in, it idles about 10 minutes. The metal door lets down just that well. Michael comes to the top of the stairwell. They were kissing. Everybody went ballistic, screaming and hollering, hooping and screaming. Wow. Well, Michael, Tito, Jackie, Marlo, Jermaine came wow. on the steps. It was total chaos. I didn't come in to see the Michael Jackson vibe. I didn't come to see none of them. When they walked through the crowd, everybody hooped and hollering, trying to get to them. I said, up the steps. Right, my name on the jet. I the you jet. didn't. Did I? They talked about me like they talked about Jesus. I'm trying to tell you something. That uh. would make me, I knew that. I put my name on that jet and the elephant. That would make me the elite graffiti artist of the world. Of the world. I'm trying to tell you. <sighs> All I wanted to do was read about myself. And I would do anything by any means necessary to read about myself in the newspapers. And wow. that's what I did. That's what I did. I came up with, with a scheme. I had the police come to the practice one time. Yeah. And, and I had my buddy, I had my brain gun. And I said, these cops come up. Why don't you start shooting at them? What? He said, why? I said, why should I do that? He got brain guns, man. Nobody's going to get hurt. When they come in the building, they'll find out when the shots has come. They're going to need their vehicles under the tender. Yeah. I'm a mark and I'm a mark. 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 Go ahead, Brad, do that, do that. So I called the cops. The cop, only two cop cars showed up. I said, that's not enough, man. That's not enough cop cars. So I took my hat off. You know, this when I take my hat off, they start cutting loose. Two cop cars shows up. I take my hat off. He start cutting loose. They didn't know where the shots were coming from. They start backing up. He reloaded and start shooting at him again. They called for backup. And backup came. And he started shooting. I said, now I struck at him. But they said, coming in the building. Go downstairs to your apartment and chill. We was in the we was in the apartment. And they stuck him in the building. He went downstairs and he chilled. Yeah. He goes back downstairs and seen all the vehicles, police, cornbread. Oh my God. They ride it around. There's too many vehicles that I rode on. They couldn't take off the street, but they were not publicizing. They were not publicizing. Because they clocked it from the jump, what your intentions were. Well, and slowly it came to light that you were you were being publicized each time. So what they they kind of ruled, they just stopped publicizing that you were doing right. it, even though right. it was right. Right, 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 right. How much? Give me more account because this is some documentation of an heart, like this stuff that did not get publicized once the elephant had happened and the Jackson Five, had t- all of that. What? Give me more that has not been documented. I want you to name one hip hop artist that was before me. Before you? Yes. 
Wow. I couldn't. Tell me. There was none. I started this shit. He started this shit, people. He started this shit. You know, like Banksy with the elephant at his, uh, you know, at his gallery exhibition. This, you were there before that. You did the elephant. What, what do you think he got? The base he has my elephant, and Baskog has my crown. Right. Are you are you aware of that? I don't. Yeah, mind. of course. I mean, God, that's my that's my brother. Both of them are my brothers. Yeah. I just can't believe it. You know how I got the crown? Tell me. I came home in '67. I just started bombing everywhere, man, and I was a new phenomenon. And I would come to your neighborhood and bomb everywhere. And people just like couldn't understand who was cornbread, yeah. and I became a, 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 a phantom. Phantom, yeah. yes. I was a phantom in the night. I'd be it when, when you go to sleep, and I'm on all through your neighborhood, and they begin to talk about me. And then my name appeared dead. I came back from the dead. Oh, it really blew up. It really blew up. So, um. Hmm. So um, I start walking bus routes, mm. and I would go out. And I just write my name. Like I, I would go all of the neighborhoods, and um, the gangs I was at the reform school. They were my friends, mm. and we, we were young criminals. But they were into hurting each other, shooting and stabbing, disrespect. I wasn't into that. No, you, you know, I, 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 I was, I was, I was like, I was like, I liked the tension. That I got from the administration, talking to the social workers and the teachers and the psychiatrists. We going back and forth, and I yeah. tell them, "We try to get out of here. You gonna hear about me? I'm going to set this shit off." Mm-hmm. And um, I think that by way of Cornell's death was the platform that started all of this. Had he not died, I believe that would eventually grew out of this. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 So when I came home, I started writing the name Cornbread everywhere and anywhere. This is what I did as a pastime. And I made people talk about me. I made people I made people pay attention to me. I'm, I'm some new or brand new phenomenon. There's no other artist who's going around writing his name anywhere for the level that I was doing it. Game members did it. The game members wrote their name on walls to identify their turf. That's right. I wrote my name on Wars because Phil Love was my was my campus, and everybody knew about me. I'm coming in one night, and I see a bunch of guys on the corner, mm. you know, having fun, busting with each other, talking and drinking and smoking, mm. and, and, you know. And I stand there and I listen to him talk. I get my little laugh on. I said, "Let me let these guys know who I am." So I walk across the street, put up my kids' paper, I go cornbread. And they said, whoa, that's you. They came with where I was and said, oh, my God, who are you? Who are you? Where you come from? Where you live at? I said, this is my neighborhood, man. Y'all knew Jackson, my neighborhood. I just come home. How long you been? I said, I've been, I've been away for a couple of years, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So Teddy said, well, man, can I, can I write my name with your spray paint? I said, go write his name. He wrote Teddy. And he wrote these emblems, Delta Phi Soul. I said, what's that? He said, that's the street club that we belong to. And I want you to join us. Mm. I said, okay. He said, come down Pee Wee's tomorrow, about 6, 30, 7 o'clock. That's where we're going to be. So I meet some Pee Wee's. I mean, this guy's like, this is Cornbread. You know that, that, that's that, that's that type of thing. So Tiddy wanted to be my man. He said, I want to hang out with you, man. I said, he said, when you go out, write your name. I might want to go out and write my name with you. He said, come on. I said, come on. So we start going out. And he threw him catch the bus. I said, no, we walk everywhere. And I watched him. All the gang members whose neighborhood, I went to these neighborhoods and I knew where the gang members they was from. I was in jail with these guys. And they told me, you better come down that way and drink wine with us. You better come down and drink it on you. And I made it my business to go to every gang member I knew and drink wine with these guys. And I would take Titty with me. So TV. affiliated do you were affiliated with all those loosely because of your notoriety. You made you it, it gave you it gave you the key to the city. Exactly. I had a free pass. I had a free pass. I wrote I wrote letters for these guys. 
I mean, we hung out in reform school together. I mean, I busted up with him. You know, we was we was down below. And so when I came home, I hooked up with Delta Phi Soul. And Titty was like the, um, I think Titty was the president. And um, Titty wanted to hang out with me. So I had to take him on route with me. And I used to write cornbread, I used to write Titty. By the time I had to write my name with real big nine letters, T-I-T-Y, screen of letters, he would write Titty four or five times real fast. And I'd take my rhyme, write cornbread real big and legible and neat. Mm. And he'd write Titty all around corn. I didn't mind that. But every time I told him he would write cornbread, he would write Titty five, six times. I didn't think, I didn't know what he was getting there. And after so many times, he wrote Titty, King of the Walls. I took that personal. I said, Titty, what do you write? What do you write this? I mean, you can't write this. You know, I put that letter. I let you ride with me. Just because you write your name four or five times to my one time, four, one or two times to make you the king. Uh-huh. You can't write King of the Walls, Titty. You don't ever write King of the Walls. He said, no problem. So I wrote Cornbread, King of the Walls, and all kings wear crowns. And I put a crown on my name. There it is. And that's the that's the crown that that's the crown that basketball took. And I wrote that elephant. That's the elephant that Banksy took. And it's all good money. That's crazy. It's all good money. Do you um I mean look, graffiti is infectious. It is. I mean, some people, man, like I said before it's in your blood. You know, it's in your blood, yeah. It's in your blood, man. It's in your DNA. And don't let your father be one and you be one. Man, you know, all, mm-hmm. you got, all, you got, all you can be is an artist. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's going to evolve you to be, whether you like it or not. Because mm-hmm. that's the world. Mm-hmm. That, that, that'd be a toilet. That's, that's, what, that's what we revolve in the art world, not the street world. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, I mean, where to begin? Where to begin? It's evolved. And do you do you often feel like because you know you talk about Tiddy and you and obviously yourself, these are like early beginnings of you know, even having the crown on the top of a tag. That to me, it's like it's like hearing Hendrix pull off a riff. It's so uh installed in the mind of everybody. You know, but this, this, it all starts from somewhere. It must actually, when you see the evolution of graph, it must actually, it must, must uh, stir up some cause for you to want to bring up the fact that, yeah, there was me, there was Tiddy, there was these. Uh, does it not, uh, does the ego not want you to kind of announce, no, no, wait a minute, it started here, it started this, this was what happened, and these were the people. Does it make you feel that way? Right. Well, you know, I, I, I want to put it to you like, I don't, um, I want to get gratitude to New York for their contribution to this culture because it was, the birth of it was conceived here in Philadelphia. But when we start writing, I start writing cornbread and I start, teenagers didn't catch on to what I was doing until I started appearing in the newspapers. Right. When, they start, when they start reading articles about me, all of them wanted to receive that same notoriety that I received. I mm. front in the newspaper splash, headlines, magazine covers, editorials, comic scripts. I mean, they talked about I was a, I was a new phenomenon. Um, it was Crazy. It was, it was, pre, it was pre, 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 pre-hip-hop. Yeah. And the movement, the movement that we're about, that was the first wave of the hip-hop revolution because when we consume the hotels in the land city and every hotel there's a grand ballroom it was nothing but battles man and all the grand ballrooms they were nothing but battles all the all the hotels was consumed with, with 150 000 teenagers which was a first wave of the hip-hop revolution battles explain we the battles we the battle rapping. mcs and, 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 and dancing breaking you know, breaking yes Yes, wow. yes, yes, yes. Rapping. That's crazy. I can rap. I can rap. I can rap. I can bust a rap to you right now and say that's crazy. We was doing that. But see, um, wow. the, the graffiti was overlooked because when that became popular, it overlooked everything else. The artist never got the recognition that I got. 
But of course, the media had papers to sell and they could sell papers off of me. The, the, yeah. the erotic things that I was doing. They talked yeah. about me. Like they talked about Jesus. And the artists didn't get the play that I got. And a lot of a lot of um, uh, uh, graffiti artists wanted to see this say no dry and they started coming up the cracks of the walls. Phil mm. became the graffiti capital of the world. This graffiti thing was looked so bad, it went on unchecked for 17 years. And it wasn't until the black man, Wilson Good, ran in the office and looked so bad. He said his top priority was the written city graffiti that turned away city business. So I went to him hmm. with my scrapbook in hand and I said, Your Honor, I'd be a, a great asset to your program if you gave me a job. Hmm. And his, his, his program was the Philadelphia Anti Graffiti Network. We had to clean the whole city up. Everybody was pointing fingers at me before Scornbridge started it. So I go to the mayor, he gets me a job, I'll be glad to hire you. I want you down here Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning at a press conference. I'll be back in the newspaper. I'm working with some good kids who was taking time off the of school to come down to the annex where our officers have to see what I look like and sign autographs to hang out with me. And he said, Daryl, the kids can't come here, man, in the office during school hours. You got to stop it. Man, the kids is coming to Cornbread. Say, hey, sign this. Are you talking about some art? You yeah. talk some art. I would sign it. They would go sell it because my sister was on there would give me half the money. I would get more money from from the kids than I was getting from my administration paycheck. That's that that blows my mind. Yeah, man. You talk about man. When the president of the uh, the Ready Terminal Market yeah. came to me with a concept, they would put my, my face on a box of cornbread mix with the with authentic ingredients, <laughs> the Amish. What's going on? We went to the um, the, the, um, the uh, farm up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We got shears of a long girdle corn and an old fashioned uh, 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 fluff. What's the, what is it? The brown, the brown flower. The brown uh, wheat. We flower. We, we flower. Yes. Oh my God! We had a um, a white girl from South Africa named Felicity. She right. was here in the Gorman kitchen. And she used to do the bacon at night, man. And we used to sell that. We used to sell that uh, um that product in the vegetable market on the early Saturday mornings, man. Hold on, stop a minute. This is too much for me. <laughs> so you created a cornbread uh, a product that you sold, yes, be- because of your notoriety with cornbread. Yes, but it, I, it goes on. I, it goes on. It goes on, man. I got caught up in that throes and drug addiction, man. Hey Amen. And, and I was like, you know, it, it was so much like same thing, Keith Harrington, Keith Harrington, yeah. the yeah. same thing, Prosper. We all went through the same thing. They wasn't the fortune as I was. What how I mean, explain, sorry, it's just so clear. Explain what you mean. I got I got caught up in that drug addiction, man. Like, you know, um, I had a store at the Veteran the Market, and everything the Belicity cooked, we sold. So you got, I, I, you I, got I, good yeah. money, and then I it was, turned it. No, I was got good money. So I was, um, I was really like we came up, we came up, man. Uh, we those black and split movies, like we put portrayed what we seen on television gotcha. or on the movie. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. we played that the, the, uh, the junky part, and you know, just playing around, just acting. And, and Thomas was being cool, acting out, going buying the drugs and playing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, you know, at that time, um, um, there was a heroin academic in America. Yeah, and, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I, I was, a, I was, I'm a fiend. I'm, I'm, I'm an ex-fiend. Yeah. You know, and, and that day ain't nothing. I, I, I had to be where the action was at. And right about that time when things was beginning to, to be possible, I got caught up in the substance abuse. And, 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 and um, I, I really, I sometimes we, but they would turn the market, selling yeah. the goods, man. And that heroin, man, but, 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 but I'd be in that mouth. I couldn't even help. I'd be nodding and slobbing from my mouth, man. And the guy with the president was like, Daryl, Daryl, what is wrong with you, man? And they just didn't and was, know. And then I, I just couldn't help myself. You know what I'm and they was giving me the money. Then we made that Saturday. It's just yours. We, we, we went put up in the mass production. Yeah. And man, I just couldn't, I understand. And, you know, that, that plague followed me for a long time. 
How many years? Because, how many years did it did, did it consume you? Well, I left it alone, and I got straight for a long while. Okay. And, and then the, um, I left. I went to New York. I went to school, and I came back home. I actually yeah. got a job with Wilson Good, and Wilson Good um, appointed Tim Spencer, the, the director of the Philadelphia Anti Graffiti Network. Okay. He was uh, uh, one telling me you can't have the kids coming down during school hours. You can't be signing the kids' work or was asked their work. And he's saying he might have been a director of the show, but I was a star. He might have been the director of the program, but I was a star of the show. Yeah, yeah. When the media would come, where's cornbread? And kids would come mm. from school. I was sit there, man, like, you know. And then he, you know, Tim didn't, Tim, didn't, Tim, didn't, Tim, didn't, Tim didn't like that. He didn't like my old, oh, he was living in my shadow. He was a director. And he took it personally. We had a personality clash. Okay. We didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't, you know, we didn't work out. So what date was this? When, when did this take place? What, what, decade? Wilson Good. I think Wilson Good came in August 84. This is like 86. So this was peak New York. No, maybe just after the peak of New York Fever. So everything was like battered. Yeah, I mean, fell off here with the, but Wilson Will came in four, we cleaned it up in 84. But okay. I mean, like, it was, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't come and do the bed. I stopped bad, fell off your hooked. Hmm. And they pointed for them. You started it. So I see we were starting, starting your neighborhood. And I started, I was charged with holding more for me. And hmm. I was just beginning to establish a political foundation for myself. I came members of the neighbor advisory councils hmm. to try to do, to introduce the positive things about myself in the community. And, Tim saying that, and, you know, he every time when we have a board meeting, a meeting, I said he would let me become a, a, Bruce, a verbally abusive in front of in front of me uh, to me, in what, front of people, you? you know, and, and, and it's like Damn, well, fucking I, I got to I got to a point where I started putting him in his place, you yeah. know, in front of other people, you know, and so it was in his office when he said, "Why don't you just pack your stuff and leave, man." I said, Tim, you wouldn't be sitting in that chair if it wasn't for me. You didn't yeah. hire me. Wilson hired me, and you can't fire me. So why don't you just sit in your chair and, and, and mind your business and leave me alone? Just try to get along, man. Because I remember I could only take but so much. Yeah. I went back to my desk and said, now, ten minutes later, two cops, two uniform cops walking through that school, cool, bread. Come on, man. Come on. I looked at Tim. Man, he's the first person I put my break. I put the break in his face, man. Fuck and yeah. I went, and I went back to Wilson Good, and Wilson Good would not override his decision. No. I was, I was, I was, Dude. I was back in the street, man. So I, I start started selling drugs. I, I started yeah. selling drugs. I started selling drugs. Before you knew, it, I was back, back with it again. And this That's time, fucked. Man, That's know, fucked. I, yeah, I, I, I went. I stayed away for a minute. I stayed away for a minute, right? And my barber, who's a graffiti artist, um, he was cutting my hair. He used to always tell me, come on, Brady, you got to come back, man. You got to come back. Mm. I might say, I'll come out here. I said, man, this guy, he said, man, we put the show together, man. We're going to showcase your name. We're going to go get you on a limousine. We're going to give you some money, man. And these people don't mean that we know you. But we're going to yeah. come get you, man. All we want you to do is be available. Mm. I said, come get me. Come get me. So I cleans up. I wrestles up. I cleans up. I goes down with these guys, man. And we pulled up, man. I must be over, man. But the car you had was like, with a man, and I go get the balance and just went with wild and the music flaring and then with the yeah. stupid, right? It was crazy cars. Yeah, yeah. And we pulled up, man. And they mobbed me like I was an Elvis or somebody. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm still drunk crazy. I'm like, what? I don't believe this bullshit. Yeah, I tried to tell you, Brent. I tried to tell you. And um, I used to hear tell of Basquiao, Keith yeah. Harrington, you know, and I thought, you know, I'm looking up to them, and here they are, but a little older than my children, looking up to me. Crazy. You know. Mind-blowing. Right. And 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 they, I was, we, all the three of us was in the same old substance abuse, you know. Survived, at that point, at that point, with you know, did you? I mean, listen, this is going to be a crass question, but did you chop it up with them on that on that level at this did event? I, did I what? Did you chop it up with them on that level at this event? 
Did you guys get on it? Who? Together? You, Chris Herring, um, Keith no, Herring, and something no, no, like that? No, no, no. They I had to gone. ask. When I came That's... out, they were gone. When okay. I came when I came up, when I came up, you know, from, from, from the subculture, to the art world, they were gone. Okay, okay. Right. But that was before them, and they they are me. I didn't know how I didn't know my head was so far down in the ground, man. Yeah, I'm I looking bet. up to them, and they just don't know my children, and they always looked up to me, you know. And and, and basketball, he can have the key to have the crown, mm. and basically he can have the elephant. That's all good money, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Any other names from back uh, in Philadelphia times that you want to give a shout out that that, that perhaps uh, do not get the, the acclaim that they deserve? You know, it's a titty, it was gangs Doctor, themselves. Dr. Cool, Dr. Cool, number one. Uh-huh. Uh, T-Bob, Neptune, Calepto Kid, Cool Earl. Um, my man, Titty, man. It, 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 titty was too, I always say it. it, it titty and Bobby Cool and Chewy, you know. Uh, we were the main ones. Mm. Um, cool, Calypso kid. Um, bad news, Jimmy. Mm. You know, um, cold duck. You know, mm. I think I, I ran for two years by myself. For two years, from sixty-seven to sixty-nine, the city belonged to me. They were were you the, seeing was, their names as you gradually got more notorious? About about sixty-nine, when I started paying in the newspapers, they started about sixty-nine. That's when it started coming out. I was I started to pay the newspapers and I, people started talking about me a lot. Mm. And a lot of kids like wasn't really into gang war. You know, a lot of kids wasn't into sports. Yeah. You know, a lot of kids just hanging around had a lot of idle time to do nothing. You yeah, know? Idle time, yeah. Right. And the graffiti is not simple behavior, man. It's not mm. simple behavior. And mm. it's a form of expression. And if you got any any um, uh, any God gifted talent, why not exhibit it? You know, For sure. right? For sure. And I had a scheme, like you know, I know how what you do when I was at YDC. I, I got all these accolades and special tips, and then you know, all these well wishing me that you do well, you mm-hmm. can take this to another and do well for yourself. I like that, you know. Yeah. And I yeah. knew that I could get the same thing I got if I came to the street. There was no computers. Nah, that's what I, I'm saying. This I, was like I, I was a computer. This was text message before. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And he still holds true now because, yes. you know, this is like the real virus, you know, never mind what they, you know. <laughs> never mind computers, dude. Um, <laughs> and our neighborhood, white folks were still living in our neighborhood. <laughs> this was like um, the early 60s, man. Yeah. Early 60s. They put me away in 65. I came home in 67, you know. And they were, I mean, you better be right on the walls. I came, I just messed did the jail up. I'm going to make the city my campus. Yeah. And that was the beginning, man. That was the beginning. But how did it come to, how did New York uh, discover this? Like, it, was this through the media that it came through the pipelines to, to, to the Bronx? It was, it, was, it was right as that migrated from Philly, did went to New York. Top Cat left Philly, went to New York. You mm. know, um, it, don't, it don't take much. I mean, it was just next door. You know, yeah, the thing true. about New York is New York is the media capital of the world. That's right. And anything happens in New York is magnified. Yeah. We didn't have that benefit in Philly. When we started, like, you know, people like, we didn't get their homes written on, churches, buildings. Yes. People got their cars written on. I mean, like, it, it, it became a, t- a, a contagious disease and it spread like a wildfire. You guys had no mercy, man. You're hitting yeah. churches and cars. And- <gasps> yeah, man. It was like, you know, it was, like, it was like, and it was ugly. And when nobody going to invest no money in nothing like that or promote mm-hmm. nothing like that, mm-hmm. you know, we went to um, um, the graffiti alternative workshop headed by Mina Siegel, who was students at the University of Pennsylvania. And her and some students put together an open up workshop with their own money. I'm more surprised with hopes of, uh, of, of coming there and, 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 and this person showing them something they were tapping to our culture man and that was yeah. a beautiful thing of course you know yeah. she was a plus and um, Frank Rizzo the last day that she went to the, to the man asked him for funding and he mm. said "Did the same kids you know fuck that time you want, you want me to fund these guys hell no I'm not gonna fund them 
And each generation, each generation passed on, Rap really went on unchecked for 17 mm. years. Wow. Seven I just got worse and worse and worse. And worse. So um, I got the, got the job with Wilson Good. That was a plus, but you know, I ran a thing with Tim. Yeah. It was crazy. It, 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 it goes on, man. It goes on. It goes on and on. How do you feel? How do, how do you, Cornbread, how do you, feel, how do you feel about this? Because... And this is just a bit of a revelation that kind of kicks in now when I hear you conversating and you know, and people who invested money back at that in in their oh, days. Oh, that coffee. was my point. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. That was my yeah. point. Go on, go. Nobody invested in us. Nobody they invested, invested in the scene, but not you. And then they invested in us at all. But they invested that, in the scene, they, but they didn't invest in you, right? Listen to me. Listen to me. In Philadelphia, nobody invested in nothing when it came to us. That's because fucked. it was because it wasn't right. That's fucked. Okay. But when they migrated, when they migrated yeah. to New York, they had investors that invested in the artists, that invested in the dancer, that invested in the rapper, and brought it to the forefront. When everything happened, same thing here in Philly. When yeah. We got to New York, but there was an investment for us. Does that hold a grudge in your mind? What bothers me is New York wants to think that. They gave birth to this country, and they did. Yeah, I feel. I do know. I do know that. Well, know what happened that at that, at that time, history speaks for itself. Um, yeah, um, there's a Herwood academic that took place in New York, and hundreds of thousands of people controlled the streets because they were addicts. Yeah, had a real drug problem in New York, man. A real bad drug problem. For real. That's during the days. That's during the same time. When 150,000 teenagers had a social arising going. That was mm. the first wave of the hip hop revolution. Mm. And by the time I moved and migrated to New York, the Bronx put a title on it and called yeah. it hip hop. It was exactly the same thing we did in Philly. They don't like when I speak because history speaks for itself. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. And um, you're not. This isn't the first example of how uh, the history books like to be rewritten to fit the narrative of people that are on top. Well, well I'll tell you this much. I'm going to tell you this much. I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say that. I got to watch what I say. Really? I really do. What you, what you say, it come back and bite you. But, yeah, I feel you. But I try to not. I try to let that that history speak for me. Because the cream, the cornbread, rises to the top. Right. right. <laughs> history speaks for me. History speaks for me. Yeah. And you know what? Here's the, here's the truth about um, purity. is uh, There's always somebody, like myself, I, will, I 100% hold my hand up to it, um, that uh, likes the truth to come out likes uh likes cultural reference points to be uh, facts and this is one of those facts this is one of those hard some people don't want to hear it some people you know they like the narrative to be of their you know of their gain but it ain't the truth well a lot of people know the truth a lot of people a lot of people know the truth especially when i come over there mm. you know there was a um don weasman a documentary film about graffiti Mm. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of scholar film filmmakers told the truth. Mm. Um, New York just didn't have the history, just didn't have the history, mm. and just didn't have the history. And Philly did, but New York is the media capital of the world, and anything they do is magnified. Now, mm. you know, they need the world to believe that this took place with them in the beginning. It did not. Yeah, it took place with me in the beginning. Yeah, and it just it just blows my mind. It I. How do you feel about how do you feel about nowadays uh, writers adopting a purist attitude to things that technically they would have got they would have received information from a commercial standpoint. Think about do you know what I'm saying? It's like you were the original. You were the original grail that you then saw get to a commercial level. Then after that, 
writers suddenly get a purist attitude of, oh, that's the da 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 But the truth is, they stand from a point of view that they received the information from a commercial place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's ironic because a lot of a lot of information they get awarded. Like, I read books about history and biography. Like, they made Star Wars. They made Star Wars and had a screening of Star Wars in Philly at a library. And they would suggest, I would suggest about us, so you need to go see that, you need to go see that. Yeah. And I goes down there and I sit and like maybe six, seven, eight, it was rose up. Yeah. And we watched the film and at halftime, the lights came on and it was cues, cues and answers, cues and answers, questions and answers. Yeah. So people ask some different questions. I raise my hand. And I stand up. I said, how is it you can make a film about graffiti and I am not included? Everybody turned around like, who the hell, who is this? Who was just talking? So the guy said, you are not included. Well, who might you be, sir? I said, my name is Cornbread. And they went, oh my God. Everybody turned around. Why, why? I can hear him talk about it. He put his two fingers to his foot, to his face, to his head, and put his head down. And he knew what he learned afterwards. After that film was made, he had to confess. And I said, wow. he said, come on down, Cornbread. I came down. He said, I want to apologize to you, man. He said, I want to apologize to you because I know now, but I didn't know then that you should have been in this film and this started the film of him. He didn't say he was sorry. He said, I want to apologize. And that was good enough. Right. And even with that being said, and, you know, like I'm saying, um, Star Wars is a New York thing. Yeah, nobody, true. Nobody invested in us. And they still haven't. That's the problem. Like, absolutely. You're right. You're right. That's fucked because right. you guys have got, like, you were the, they were, yeah. you were before that. There should be documentation. Right, right, right. Yeah, why are, yeah, this is fucked. We we are the originators of Digma Spins and Dr. Faso. That was hip hop. That's not hip-hop. good enough, man. That's not good right. enough. The, the Philadelphia, the city, should be championing this. This, you know, right. like the arts, the arts survive. The arts are a tourist commodity in these cities, man. Right. right. <gasps> criminal. Absolute yeah. criminal, and they label you guys as the criminals back in the day. They need to take a look in the, the mirror. Well, I, I remember when I went to New York, I was going to school, man, and that art man was like, I looked up, man, and see guys on the train. You didn't see them guys' names on the trains. You didn't even see their names, man. You see that? You didn't see the train. You see their art. It was beautiful. Mm. Man. It was yes. so uplifting, man. It was so I never forget it, man. It was very uplifting. That's what yes. talent. You know, the guys get them training. They get them training all night, all night long, all mm. night long. So when they get the train going down, they go straight to work. You mm. know. So when we did, when we gave birth to, they took it to the next step because they had investors. They were much bigger. Yeah. Um, people like pour money in these guys, man. These guys is rapping. They was buying them a jewelry, putting one of their bags, coming on television. Yeah. You know, look at the type of way, dress us the type of way. And Phil loves to dress up town and everything changed. Mm. He was overlooked, you know, but it's an origin to everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I tell the truth, let the truth be told. Truth has to be coming out and it yes. has to come out like this. I think it's a crying shame that me over here in London, we're talking about this now and there ain't a platform in fucking Philly that allows, or at least a, some sort of, yeah, I whisper that there's there's a documentary that's going Well, a lot happen. of these guys, man, like, oh, I just turned 67. Oh, a, lot of, a lot of us, man, is like up there at age and settled down and they're falling back, you know. I yeah. still keep it popping, you know, like, you know. Yeah, you um, do. You this, keep it popping. This, this, is, this, this is my life. This is where I live, you know. In fact, I'm currently putting on, um, I'm putting together, like, putting together a book, uh, a desktop art picture book, trying to get different artists to be part of this project with me. Um, yeah. Send me their artwork. I need their photograph. I need their bio. I need the email address. I can be reached at yeah. 
cornbread1, the number, cornbread1 Philly at gmail.com. There you go. Small case letters. We're going to get this out there so people can, that, that, that contribution to this book, it, it comes Small, comes small case letters. Cornbread1 Philly at gmail.com. And you're quick as well, man. Like, you know, we, we've been talking back and forth for a week or two. You're responsive. You are like, you don't muck about. You, you're quick. So anybody that's hitting you, you up, you'll get a response and you'll get the feedback. Right. I, want, uh, I want artists to send me their work, their bio, their email address, their yeah. photograph. I want to put them in a book. I want to showcase artists where the buyer, if anybody interested in buying your work, can contact you and not me. Mm-hmm. You're at first thing we're going to top of your work is your email address. They contact you. You get 100% exposure, 100% credit, and everything I think is yours. I get nothing. Mm-hmm. So, my book, if you're working it, and we will probably do this once a year, um, I would like to include different segments of it by our culture that includes um, B Boys photographs of B Boys. Um, Just from the day, man. Just, yeah, you know, um, undocumented um, stuff. Um, 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 Spoken word poetry, um, yeah. rapping. Um, um, there's a friend of mine who, whose daughter just got a this board a um, modeling agency. Um, a lot of urban, um, a feral fashion. Yeah. I like to, um, you know, um, feature a lot of art, um, uh, dancing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Comrade, you sound like a gentleman that uh, is fully uh, immersed in the culture. Um, does it ever? How often do you sit there and it, does it blow your mind? You know that that you were the one of the main beginnings of of this scene, and look how far it's come. Does it blow your mind? Must blow your mind. What blows my mind is um, I would like to see the fruits of my labor. I like to sit in the audience and watch it. I don't want to be like you know be worth more in death than I have in life. You know, like, you know, a lot of money like, being made up because you checked out. No, I don't want that. I want to, you know, watch the fruits of my labor, enjoy what, what's going to happen and let it, you know, let it be for one of them where I can enjoy it. Yeah. You know, this book is just a start. Um, we talk about, people talk about want to do a stage play. Another person talking about doing a, um, another documentary. I have another documentary titled Cry the City. I can be reached Brilliant. at cornbread one Philly at gmail.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I have that. t-shirts, I have hats, I have maps, I have street signs, you know. That's crazy. Well, see, see, I headed the game. Headed the game. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Speaking to the converted here, this guy, you d- d- it's crazy. It's it's and and once once we're all allowed back out and outwardly mobile. We definitely need to connect when you get over to London without question. Out question. We need to stay with me. I got campuses too, man. I got campuses, yeah. large campuses, small campuses, medium sized campuses, street maps, stop signs, no parking signs. You know, I got a whole bunch of bucket hats, baseball caps, yeah, right. hoodies. I got a whole bunch of stuff. So, man, and where can they good. get them? Where can they get them? What's the What's the website? Cornbread. Well, I, you know, my website is really under construction now. You contact okay. my email. We can talk. Okay, so it's all Corn- email so we can get that, make that happen like that. It's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure, Cornbread. It's and been my pleasure, brother. I want you brother. to contact me, man. I send it for me, man. Come over there, man. I hang out with you guys, man. Yeah, let's I do it. Love, I would love to come over there and art with the machos, man, and carry with some brothers over there, man. That would be crazy. Call, 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 talk to them. Cornbread, we're not going with you. It's simple, man, to come over here, man, and bring some work over here, man, and let's, let's make it happen. I'm with that. You hear that, people? Cornbread is in business. In yes. business. Thank you so much for joining me, mate. I thank really, you, really you. appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for having me, man, and I look forward to hearing from you again. You take yeah. care of yourself, and you be careful. My brother, Killer Keller podcast. That like it was our fashion legacy <laughs> legendaries inside the place. Cornbread, my brother. All right, man. <laughs> you stay take lucky, care, people. Man. All right, take, <laughs> take care, care, Cornbread. All right, take care, take care. Peace. 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 Woo, that was crazy. That was so dope.